Hi, Renzi. Let's take a look at what you wrote here in this new set of essays, traditional food, fast food, let's say. Experts throughout different fields, including sociology, nutrition science, and economics, have debated whether the impact of fast food on traditional food is positive or negative. Some believe that the positive effects outweigh the negative consequences. Personally, I disagree with them. This essay will argue the problem using examples of events during Cold War and empirical evidence from Oxford University to demonstrate points and prove arguments. All right, on the whole, I like this. Um, there is one sentence that I would fix, this one right here. You've got a complex sentence here, okay? Um, and what that is, is it's essentially two sentences, but you've combined them just with a comma and nothing else. Um, and if you look at them, they're actually contrasting sentences. All right, so here you've got what some people believe, and then you're saying, yeah, well, I don't agree with them. So what you really need to do here is to have some sort of linking device showing this contrast. So you could have said, however, you could have said, but, you could have said, yet. So let's try it. Some believe that the positive effects outweigh the negative consequences. However, personally, I disagree with them. Okay. That would be better. It makes more sense. Now, the other thing that concerns me about this is that um, you're talking here, it looks like you're going to talk about the negative consequences of fast food. And yes, that's part of what you're supposed to talk about, but the essay is actually far more specific. It's talking about the negative impact on families, individuals, and society. So my first concern when I read this as an examiner is that perhaps you're going to speak about the negatives of fast food in a general kind of way and not in terms of what the essay has asked you to look at, okay? Because we do this, we get these sort of red flags. It's kind of like an alarm goes off and we're like, uh-oh, maybe this is not going to be a focused essay, okay? And you don't want that. So you want to make sure that your introduction reflects the different elements of the question that you have. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Oh, and it should be the Cold War because we usually consider that there's one Cold War. Um, and it does need an article. All right. So let's move on and see what else you wrote. On the one hand, there is ample evidence to claim that the influx of fast food is positive. The central reason behind this is twofold. Firstly, individuals have been able to have the nice taste food at more reasonable and affordable price. All right, again, grammar. We don't say this, the nice taste food. It's not proper English. And then you should have been at a more reasonable and affordable price. So a better expression might've been something like, firstly, individuals uh, are now able to have a tasty food or delicious food food at a more reasonable and affordable price. Okay, that would have worked. Also, they can have the exact same product wherever they are, for example, in London or in Tokyo. Okay, secondly, okay, uh, secondly, fast food has contributed, uh, no, that's not right. So uh, fast food has, how about helped societies by connecting them to each other. For example, after the Cold War ended in the 90s, McDonald's, uh, should be no A there, the American, the renowned American fast food chain opened its first branch with an R in Moscow. The store was praised as a cultural bridge between two great nations. Thus, it's clear that fast food has the positive effect, has a positive effect to some extent. Okay, so, all right, I guess, because you use the word individuals here, you could say that you're talking about how it's been beneficial to individuals. And here, because you're talking about how it helped this bridge, perhaps we could say that this is talking about the positive effect on society. I haven't read anything about families yet. So let's see what you wrote here. So on to your second paragraph. On the other hand, although there stands an argument that fast food, mm, let's try that again. On the other hand, although there stands an argument, I don't really like this expression. <sighs> Let's see. On the other hand, although there is an argument that fast food enriches people's lives, 
The impact of replacing traditional food cannot be ignored. That's better. This is largely because this can lead to the monoculture world where there is only one dominant culture and there is no diversity or originality of each nation. For example, an extensive study by Oxford University, Capitalize Your You, showed that over 90% of traditional culture has disappeared completely from people's daily lives, largely because of the emergence of global culture like fast food. This can lead to a decline in nationalism in individuals and families, and this can even put, mm, no, and this can even endanger the existence of the society. Therefore, it is possible to state beyond doubt that disadvantages of fast food outweigh the advantages. Okay, so let's talk about this. You, my concern was that you didn't really talk about the family. And I'm going to argue that this doesn't talk about the family. You mentioned the word family once. That doesn't mean you covered it, all right? Not as far as IELTS is concerned. Just because there's a mention of family in, in the paragraph, that's not enough. Because this is not about family, really. Not really, right? So um, this, to me, really talks more about society. Uh... And I also felt like you went into a lot of theory and you didn't really have a lot of support for your theory. So let me show you what I mean. You had this thing about 90% of traditional culture. And then you said this can lead to a decline and this can endanger society. So that's really a stretch. You're making all these really strong assertions, but there is no support to back any of that up. And so that for me was a little bit of a problem. Uh, but as I said, so yes, that's one of the problems for sure, but also you didn't talk about family and you really needed to. Uh, one thing you could have talked about in terms of family is food culture. Okay. You could have talked about number one, um, the fact that it's often families that pass down, uh, recipes from one generation to another. And so, you know, if all these families are eating this kind of homogenized fast food, then a lot of that food culture is lost. And that affects both the family and society. OK, you could also say that families traditionally that, you know, cook this kind of traditional food also eat together. All right. Um, and it's a time for bonding. And maybe they even cook the food together, you know, with different family members producing something different or helping out in a different way. So you can say that family bonds are lessened when each person is kind of out like on the street corner picking up fast food and, you know, eating on the go. So these were some things you could have talked about in terms of the negative effect on the family. Okay. All right. Let's see. From the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that fast food, you're missing a word, has, ne has a negative impact on every sector of society, which outweighs because it's impact. Okay, a impact, an impact which outweighs the positive influence of this food. You don't have to say fast food again. You can just say this food, which makes it cohesive. It is predicted that the traditions of each culture will increasingly grow in importance in today's global world. Not the today's. It's either the global world or today's global world. Okay, so I like a lot of this. I thought you did a good job, but of course there were some things that you needed to work on. Um, your vocabulary was good. I think grammar had a couple of errors here and there. And then of course there was stuff that we talked about in terms of task achievement. Okay. That's what needs to be worked on. Let's take a look at your rainfall task is okay. The line graphs show the amount of rainfall in 2018. Mm. Uh, not by a month. That's incorrect. How about this? The line graphs show the amount of rainfall uh, in 2018 per month in three regions in the UK. Fine. Clearly, each line fluctuates greatly from time to time. That's a little vague. Um, I don't know. Yeah, and you did the same thing here. That's a little vague. There's more you can say about the fluctuation rather than it just fluctuated. So look at them. Who has the lowest lows? Well, Scotland and Wales. So what could you say about that? You could say that England does not have those lows. Therefore, I think you could have said here, and what a really good overview is for this particular one, is uh, overall, uh, while all three regions fluctuated considerably 
on average, England had uh, the highest rainfall. Okay, that would have been good. So let's continue. The line, okay, I already said that. England had, has, not has, it's had, because it's 2018, so it's all in the past. England had relatively the biggest amount of rainfall throughout the year. Good, you said it here, but it should have been in your overview. Hitting 70 at the bottom? I don't understand that. 70 at the bottom? I think you mean something else. I think you mean hitting 70 at its lowest point between May and June and reaching nearly 130 at the peak in July. Fine. In Scotland, the figure seems to be fluctuating the most, dropping down from 140 in January to below 30 in February and skyrocketing again towards March, reaching as high as 140. Figures of Wales have similar transitions as transitions as those of Scotland. It's not one because it's figures, those. However, during the period between August and October, the figures plateau at the bottom below 50, whereas two figures of Edinburgh, not Edinburgh, Edinburgh, we're not talking about Edinburgh, we're talking about Scotland and, and England. So don't be so specific about, you know, Edinburgh and London. Whereas two figures are fluctuating in the range, I don't understand this sentence. To conclude, figures of three regions, no. To conclude, the figures of the three regions, because we know which figures and we know which regions, fluctuated over the year. All right. Um, I want to do a quick look, even though I know what the answer is. Let's see. Yeah, 150. Okay. This felt short. Um, and I'll tell you why. 150 is fine. I mean, you're not going to be penalized, but it does seem rather short when you consider that you have 36 pieces of information here. You're obviously not supposed to mention all of them. And I do have to say that you mentioned a lot of the important ones. But for me, you were kind of missing a couple of things. Now, what are we really looking at here? We're looking at a story and we're looking at the story of rain in 2018. Anytime you hear a story or when you tell a story, what are the key elements of that story? You really need to tell us the beginning, you need to tell us the end, and you need to tell us those key points in the, in the middle. You only told us those key points, which are important points, and I agree with the ones that you selected, but um, I still think there was um, some more you could have done. So, right, for example, England, you talk to me about the low, you talk to me about the high, and that's it. That's not the whole picture, okay? So the whole picture is that England had three peaks. You only talked about one of them. So for me, a description of England would have been this. England began the year with the second highest rainfall at approximately 110 ml. It reached the lowest point between May and June at 70 uh before reaching the first of three peaks the following month uh similar peaks were reached in september and december uh at approximately 135 ml okay so that would have been a description where you talk about the beginning you talk about the low and you talk about the th three peaks the last of which is also the end point okay so that's the information I think is really important to include here. Um, I probably would have started talking about Scotland because it starts the year at that highest point. Okay, and Scotland too had two peaks. It had one here and here. And if you look at it, it ended the year just below where it began the year. So these are some things that you wanna talk about, okay? All right, um, so that's my feedback about this. I think you could have said a little more. Like I said, I would have talked about, for all three of them, I would have talked about beginning and, and then the peaks, okay? Like I said, Scotland had two, uh, England had three peaks, and then of course the lows. Um, the one here, the one here, and then this is also an interesting point, which you did mention, you mentioned that plateau, okay? And then for England here. So like I said, it turns out to be around 15 points of information, which might seem like a lot, but it can be done skillfully without really going crazy with your word count. All right, so go ahead, correct these. Let's see more work from you and I'll be looking forward to it. So good luck.